Hello, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jesse, also known as Retroactive J. Today I'm going to be going over OBS, Open Broadcast Software. Uh, basically, 101 uh, setting up for the first time, and as well as uh, troubleshooting and little tips, tricks, and things you can do in OBS that will be very helpful to you. So hopefully this will be helpful for newcomers and people who are just need a little bit help troubleshooting OBS as well. Um, let's see, let's let's start with um, something very, very basic as in adding an overlay. Now I'm not going to show you how to make an image or how to do an image or anything like that. But I, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna, you know, add in my overlay. It's pre pretty much just going to be an image, and you select, you find your image. Mine's called Art Layout Three for whatever reason, and you just add it in there. Um, now, with this said image, we could do a lot of cool things with it. Um, let's say I just they don't want the whole image. So let's say I wanted to cut off that top part. I can hold Alt and I can crop it out. I can crop it out, you know, pretty much all day. Uh, I can, you know, and I can do it from the other side, or I can even do it from a corner. That's all cool. Uh, on top of that, if I wanted to make it, that image smaller, I could do something like that. Or if I wanted to distort it as well, I can hold shift and stretch it out completely and stretch it out this way as well. Or let's say, oh my god, I've messed with this so much, I need to put this back together because this looks like a freaking mess. I can do position size and I can do fit the screen, right click. Uh, position size fit the screen and that'll make it return back to normal uh, on top of that let's say well let me shrink this down real quick and show you something uh, I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit more uh, let's say I wanted this image mind you I, I wouldn't do this with the overlay for example but you can do this with any object uh, using the position and size any object you know webcam uh, window capture etc can be messed around with these same position size um, options here so if you wanted to center your image you can do that uh, let's see if you want to center horizontally it's exactly as you thought uh, if you want to center vertically, it's exactly as you thought. If you want to move this to the left edge, you can do that. If you want to move this to the top, you can do that. Uh, it's very, very, very straightforward. and You can do this with any object you toss in OBS. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I could be OCD and be like, reset the size. Also, I can also be OCD and say, fit the screen. So, there you go. Now, probably the next thing for most of you you want to add in is going to be a webcam. And what you're going to do is going to right click, add, and you would do video capture device. And but no, and then you would select your webcam, and then I'm going to tell you you're wrong. You're wrong, and here's why. Um, I would highly actually recommend doing your webcam as a global source. You're probably wondering what the hell is a global source, why would I ever bother with this button? Um, trust me, once I found out about global sources, it, it changes things. Uh, basically it gives an ability to copy and paste whatever uh, you know thing you load up as a global source and input it into another scene and you only have to edit it once. Um, now, on top of that, with you loading your webcam as a global source, or loading your capture card, or any video capture device as a global source, it will stop it from having to reload it in between scenes, as well as it prevents a lot of crashes. 
uh, with the video capture device. So what you're going to want to do is go to global source and you're going to add and then you're going for webcam in particular you're going to want to go to your video capture device um, you can just label this webcam pretty straightforward and then I'll select mine which is going to be Logitech Pro uh, HD Pro webcam C920 um, now I could hit OK from here but that's wrong um, what you're want to do actually it, for whatever reason OBS has given me problems and has given many people problems when they have a 1080p webcam make sure your webcam uh, resolution is not 1080p it makes uh, if anything I would set it to 1280 by 720p or you know or lower uh, do not go uh, higher than 1080p. I, I really haven't tried 1600 by uh, 896. That just seems like a weird resolution to me. It bothers me. So um, personally, I would say go with 1280 by 720p. For whatever reason, 1080p has made people buffer, uh, even though it never really showed up on my end that people were buffering. It has made people buffer on my stream for whatever reason. Um, so. With that said, I'm going to do this 960 by 720. Now this is a 3 fourths cam. Uh, reason why I'm doing that is because I have a green screen. My green screen does not cover the whole thing. But I tell you what, I'm I'm going to show you a couple, you know, a couple more things here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to have mine on there uh, with the green screen. And what you're going to want to do is use the chroma key but first let's get that loaded in that way we can play around with it okay and then we're going to hit ok and then we're going to add global source webcam you're going to go there yeah now now you see why i use my uh my uh what we call it my custom resolution so with that said Basically, what you're going to want to get a new is go to properties, and we're going to want to select out our green screen. And that looks terrifying at the beginning. Uh, so let's let's bump that up to like that's. We're going to bump that down. I, this this will be something you'll just want to play with. There's no set finite green screen setting uh, I will say is that the ideal for a good green screen is to have it all one you know matching color consistently uh, and with your lighting you don't want any big shadows behind you if you're using green screen so okay cool and uh, here's where what I was showing you earlier comes into play uh, you have two options from here you can do this you can do alt you can hold alt and you can see you can crop out um, so basically your green screen does not have to cover the whole area in fact it could be just a box behind you uh, you know and you, you can play around with that or you know what I what I did personally is I just went ahead and did the 960 by 720 and it pretty much crops out my green screen for me uh, since it does not cover the whole widescreen effect uh, from here as I showed you before I can shrink down my webcam size uh, I can even stretch it like I said with the image you can do anything I already showed you with that uh, with any object in OBS uh, we're gonna and then you can reset size and uh, one of the things I do like about OBS is that you'll feel it grab the corner and be able to mess with it a little bit more but there we go we, we got um, an overlay set up and then all we need to do is let's say capture a game what uh, right now I got Jackbox party pack um, and what you're wanting to uh, do, and I'll tell you what. Oh, another thing with the preview mode right now, I have mine set to one, uh, one one mode, 
one to one mode which is going to be 720p for mine uh, you can do fit the scale mode uh, it's whichever floats your boat whichever thinks is you think is easier for you um, personally reason why I use one to one mode for the most part is because I want to see what it looks like in 720p and you know this will be the size of what they'll see so I want to make sure the text is appropriate size as well uh, but fit the scale mode is good for whenever I'm you know not messing around with the text size or anything like that so let's see you're gonna want to go to add uh, and you're gonna want to go to game capture and this will be ideal for any game you get from Steam most games are you're able to capture uh, with the game capture and I you know there's been only a couple of exceptions uh, let's see and I would recommend checking stretch image to screen and there you go now we have a conundrum right here is that the game is covering up my face my beautiful beautiful face ain't that a damn shame so with that said let's shrink it down and do this and then so now that you got it to the size you want on your overlay uh, what I would recommend doing is going to order you're going to move to bottom boom it's like it was always meant to be there uh, the only thing is that once it's on the bottom right now I have this image covering up so I can't select it from here let's say for whatever reason I, I toss it over there and I, I, I can't move I the only thing I can grab is my image so you can select it from here and then position this around uh, generally it, you guys may not like it or the sound of this but I'm pixel perfect with uh, you know the way I set things up I don't like to cover anything up uh, so I, I kinda just half ass that putting in there uh, as well as just so you know I could do this green screen a little bit better but uh, I didn't I'm just kind of winging it and going through this tutorial uh, again it's one of those things you're gonna have to figure out okay so more on um, to add a scene we're gonna do this you can right click add scene scene 2 uh, this is good if you, and you want to do a break screen or whatever uh, and this is where your global source comes into play more importantly is that your green screen is going to be set up for all the scenes you have I remember when I before I found out about global sources I was having to reset up my green screen on every single scene and it was just atrocious um, but now that I have that figured out I, I just I kind of hate people for not telling me sooner or let me know that's a thing um, so that I can't stress enough how helpful global sources are for video capturing devices uh, anything you use with a chroma key um, you know such as window captures and uh, things you just simply copy and paste and put on multiple scenes uh, aside from that you, just to go through this real quick um, I'll tell you what we're gonna do like an image slideshow you're probably wondering why this is really good for break screens uh, what I found very simple break screens you do several wallpapers uh, I'll just show let's see downloads uh, let's go for retro wallpapers I really don't care uh, that works and okay okay so here's some retro wallpapers I have I set my uh, real quick I did fade in only fade in only make sure the if you had if you didn't have fade in only mind you not all these images are the same size apparently so this is gonna look like 
very horrible. Fade in only. We'll have it fade out all the way, and then it will fade in all the way. So you can see me bleed through it a little bit. Or you can see it, it just looks a little awkward if you got things behind it. Um, for whatever reason. So I personally like fade in only. It just makes it more solid in fading in. Uh, you can do randomize. Uh, you can even disable the fade fading if you want to, uh, as well as you can change the time between fr uh, frames as well. Uh, so, on top of that, you can increase the size off the edges to make sure you don't got any funny stuff happening. And then you can do position and size. You can center everything so you're fine nothing looks weird nothing looks out of place and you're good to go uh, let's see another good thing for break screens in particular is just simply adding text uh, be right back nerds um, and one of the things that I will say while we're adding text here is that you can download several different fonts from Google Fonts or um, thefont.com, for example, and you know put in whatever style font you particularly like. Uh, let's see, I go with something like this on my podcast. And you know, mind you, you, you can figure it out from here, and uh, then you can have that. Uh, mind you, you know, I'll, I'm gonna make this, um, yeah, we're gonna make that about 100. Uh, let's see, right now it's kind of hard to see, so I'm gonna use an outline. I'm gonna increase the outline by that. The thickness seems to be right, and there we go. Uh, I'm gonna do center there we go now let's say if you want to do something special with the text like have it scroll I'm sure you've seen people do that for, uh, what you can do is you can use custom sense uh, you can do si uh, size uh, let's say you wanted to sc scroll from the entire left side of the screen to the right side of the screen you're gonna set your resolution or you're gonna set your uh, your width to whatever the size of your stream space resolution excuse me this base resolution is uh, which for me it's going to be 1920 so you can set it like that and then you can set the align I don't think the aligns Get them well. The align actually is really good for centering. Uh, when you use the custom ex extents, saying you want it to match up between, uh, you know, you want it to match in a box or something. You can set the extents out uh, to like in a box size. Uh, let's, you know, and have it fit in there. In fact. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll even set the extent from here to here on a text. Uh, add text. But, and you're probably wondering why. It, it's just so I can have it even more centered than I ever you know, wanted it. Or I can even have it centered on the bottom of this, you know, the game. Uh, We'll do Bronmore and we'll do fifty. Now we'll do a hundred. I was about to put testing shit. We're gonna put testing things. Keep it family friendly. Uh so and then I'm going to if I if you know what it is gonna be, uh you have two options here. You can either type it out if you know what the 
extent's going to be. I know it's 1600. Or you can do it the old fashioned way and be really, really slow with it. I don't know if it ever speeds up, honestly. Eh, that's not too bad. But yeah, you can increase it up to that. And there you go. And then you can hit wrap, and then you can do center. Like that. And as you can see, it's perfectly, you know, pretty much perfectly centered underneath the gameplay itself, aside from the stream. Um, mind you, I can work with the bottom a little bit more. And then. I can work with the font size and we can increase that to like 200. No, oh, no, 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 way too, way too big. Um, 150. There you go. Mm, and let's say you want to, you know, be a little bit more precise. You can hit your arrow keys once you have that item selected. You can press them up or down and back them off the edge a little bit. You know, say that works out better for you. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Now, uh, with this one, I want it to scroll. So now that I have the custom extents set up on here, what I'm going to do is basically I want to I want to do it in scroll mode. Or right, let's see, you don't have to put it in scroll mode. I'm sorry, forgive me. Uh, but you can set up scroll speed. And you could do something like that. Let's say it's going 140. So there you can add in a little bit animation that it's scrolling across the screen while it's having an image slideshow behind it. it makes for a nice BRB screen that's not just a blink image, I guess. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not a big fan of a BRB screen that's just a static image. I don't know. I want, I want something. And not, not like it's got to be a whole lot for break screen. But something, you know. Um, let's see. Uh, aside from that, you got your bold. You got your italics. Uh, you got your underline. Vertical. I'm not a big fan of vertical at all. Uh, point filtering. No, no idea what that does, really, in particular. Like, um opacity you can have it transparent and fade into there oh you can have the outline transparent as well as you can let's see you can have the text itself be transparent you know to like a 50% or so uh, and you mess with things like that. Um, let's see. Can't mess with the transparency on an image slideshow. However, I will say is that you can me uh, mess with the transparency on a image itself. Uh, let's. Oh, one more thing. Let's say you're updating your layout like a million times in Photoshop or whatever uh, and you want it to automatically pick up with the latest version of your layout uh, one of the things I would highly recommend for you is having check for file changes on that image so if you make a little tiny adjustment to this layout on uh, Photoshop and you export it under the same exact file name it will automatically pick up the newest one. Uh, if you do not have that on there, I believe it will maintain the one that was originally put in. Um, I don't know if it'll update maybe the next time you turn on OBS, but I personally just like it, you know, to check for ch file changes in case I do update anything. Uh, Furthermore, uh, let's that that's basically how you add things into OBS. Now let's go further and deeper into the settings here. Uh, let's see. 
first off, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your broadcast settings. Um, you're going to make sure you have yours to a live stream. Uh, assuming you want to live stream, you can also do it file input only. Uh, but that seems kind of rather pointless when there's a button that you could just hit start recording or, you know. Um, and let's see, my streaming service is going to be Twitch. Uh, you know, I, I could do, on you know, I, I stream on another site and there might be new pics of me. No, just kidding, seriously. Uh, I just stream on Twitch. Um, and let's see the right now the play path slash stream key. If any, uh, what you're wanting to do, you're gonna want to go to twitch.tv. I'll show you here for the beginning. You're gonna drop down. You're gonna hit settings. I'm sorry, not settings. You're gonna want to <laughs> drop down, hit ja dashboard. Whoops, I done goofed. And then here you got your broadcast settings. Uh, you can update your title of your broadcast, and then you can hit, you know, whatever game you're playing, and hit update, and you're good to go. Uh, on top of that, if you're hosting somebody, this will be highlighted in red. All you want to do is just type on on host uh, backslash other or slash unhost and that'll unhost so people can want, uh, watch your stream just make sure that's off uh, but anyways that's more of a twitch thing than anything uh, stream key you're gonna want to go to your stream key anyone can use this uh, key to your broadcast to your channel do not show it on video so obviously with that said one don't show it to anybody two I'm not gonna show you mine um, so sorry to disappoint uh, you what you do is it'll you'll show it and then it'll you'll be able to copy and paste and put it in here and with that said uh, you ha you have a couple more options here I personally like reconnect if for whatever reason OBS or twitch derps out which has been known to happen. It's still uh, OBS is still something in beta, and Twitch can be unstable sometimes. So your stream can very well cut off uh, with no error on your part. You can set the auto reconnect uh, and have it. You know, I set mine to about 10 seconds, and it generally tends to be fine uh, with that. Uh, let's see the you can do delay seconds I personally like to keep that at zero twitch delay is already enough um, minimize network impact I've actually never checked that I don't know anybody who does have that checked um, personally I just leave that alone uh, let's see and then here's something if you want to do if you want to record your video automatically to a like you a folder you have labeled YouTube like I do for example uh, you can automatically save stream to file uh, so as soon as you start streaming it'll be recording what you're streaming uh, and then basically the other option here to uh, to the right here is if live uh, keep recording if live stream stops so even if I stop streaming it'll keep recording my video um, if I wanted to, uh, this is ideal if you, one, you want to keep your a stream on file and two, uh, if your stream for whatever reason cuts out and you feel like there is something very important, um, like my podcast, I, I don't like it having it cut out. And so I want to keep recording even if the stream stops, um, I generally don't have these on for my regular streams. I just set this up primarily for podcast uh, purposes. Uh, these can be, I, I don't know how much more they add to the CPU, but I'm, I'm sure recording um, the live stream will add a little bit more to the CPU. If your computer can handle it, great. Uh, my computer can, so that's good. I don't expect yours to. 
uh, let's see base resolution ideally uh, if your computer can handle it I would recommend having it uh, your base resolution uh, 1920 by 1080p which is you know and that's going to be the highest quality you can get um, and then I would recommend downscaling it by 1.5 which is going to be 1280 by 720 that's actually what twitch output is um, and then I would recommend having Lancos are, I don't even know how to pronounce that but I would recommend having the best detail and 36 samples on there um, by linear is going to be blocky by cubic is going to be fairly de decent it's going to be halfway in between it's going to be very good it, but uh, the best detail uh, mind you is going to take a lot of processing power uh, and then I would recommend you know either 60 frames per second uh, up to 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second um, it's entirely up to you I generally just set mine to 30 frames per second it tends to be just fine um, and tends to cause a lot less problems in my opinion when you have it set to 30 frames per second you know I know people who do the whole 60 frames per second and stuff and I've had viewers who've told me that they've had some unreasonable buffering on on my stream when I had it six, set to 60 frames per second it's entirely up to you um, one of the things I will say let's say your PC is not the best and you know you can't do you know it can't really handle the base resolution of being sent to uh, you know 1080p um, you can either set it to 1600 by 900 and then you can downscale it to 1280 by 720 and then you know once again if your computer is having problems you can pick the best filter from there um, or better yet if it's having a problem with that um, the encoding you can do 1280 by 720 and then do none which will be easier on your computer to process um, let's see on top uh, anything oh as far as we go uh, there's one more thing we're gonna determine uh, as far as video quality uh, purposes we're going to figure out what our encoding should be so I'm gonna show you my eh, here you know what I'll, I'm going to add this as a window window capture And we're going to select subregion on here. And one of the things I'll show you <laughs> that's kind of annoying. I hate it when it does that. So I'm, you know, I'm gonna unmaximize that just so I can show you the the capture of a window. Um, let's see add window I want to capture this window here and basically you can check or uncheck capture a mouse cursor uh, and with the window you can select subregion and you can just kind of have it a little bit more precise uh, you could still do the alt uh, the hold alt and drag just fine but I personally like to do it with the select region uh, just like I said it's a little bit more precise uh, so here we go uh, and then boom a little too big but you know whatever there we go so you can see my download speed is 46.13 MBS and with that said 
we're doing nothing with that. We, we, we don't even care about our download speed. It's our upload speed that we're going to be going with, uh, which is 16.81. That's that's great. That's more than enough. That's actually killer. Um, overkill. And with that said, I have pretty much the keys of the kingdom to set my my encoding my bitrate to as high as I want uh, but with uh, more importantly though is that twitch only allows up to 4000 bitrate uh, and here's how this basically works your upload speed you're gonna times that by a thousand so I can technically set mine to what 16 thousand <laughs> however twitch only allows you to do four thousand more importantly is that the average viewer on twitch has a download speed of three which means they can watch a stream at three thousand quality uh, months <laughs> to furthermore I you know I personally think you need to bump it down to 2500 because if you're at 3000 they're still gonna be buffering a little bit here and there when their internet dips a little bit in and out and 2500 still gives you HD quality stream on a uh, 720p uh, downscale um, now the max bit rate um, I personally just recommend doing a thousand um of whatever you got your bitrate set to so if yours is 2500 um you can do 3500 whoops uh you can do 3500 um now this is ideal for hd games now do you need all this much uh, for other games? No, you you could probably adjust this down. For let's say I do a two D indie game, I can do two thousand, or I can even do uh, fifteen hundred, and be just fine on indie games that are two D and uh, retro games and sprite based games, um, and I'll be just fine. On, on, honestly, it's more ideal for um, your HD games to be around 2,500. Um, let's see. Also, let's say your your bitrate is probably not going to be the best. One of the things I uh let, or not your bitrate, your upload speed is not going to be the best. Let's say um you have a upload speed of two. I would recommend doing, or let's say you have an upload speed of three, anyways, and you know as much as you can do three thousand. You're gonna want to do twenty five hundred. You're gonna want to use you know probably minus whatever you have max by five hundred. Your your upload speed is two. Uh, you you can maximize at two thousand. However, I would recommend minus 500 from that and going with 1500. Uh, on top of that, if your bit, uh, bit rate max is at three, your I would make sure the buffer size is at three. Or if your bit rate max, uh, or if your upload max is at two, I would do you know a thousand times whatever your max bit rate is. Or max upload is so that that's what I would uh, recommend uh, mind you you play around with these settings a lot of people are going to tell you a lot of different things you can look up an OBS chart on what your scales should be um, but the bitrate will definitely be a variant of what game you're playing uh, if the higher the game, you, you know, the less you want it to look all blurry and all that. Uh, the, the higher quality of the game, uh, the higher the bitrate you're going to want. Um, also, if you're going to, if the max bit uh, upload you have 
is a two upload. Uh, one thing you might want to consider, as much as you may hate it, you probably don't want to go down from 720p or anything like that. But uh, truth be told, is that you may not have the quality, you know, bit rate to go with your seven uh, your 720p. Uh, and you may just have to accept the fact that everything is going to look blurry uh, if you did things at a 720p level. So you might want to downscale it to, um, you know, even lower to something like 480p, uh, which is, I, I, I pick 480p uh, as the next one down I would go to because that's a YouTube resolution as well. Uh, so it makes exporting what you see on Twitch t to the same on YouTube. Um, you know, and that that would be the next recommendation I would have. Or, you know, again, if that doesn't work, you can do 852 to 480 on the custom resolution here and then have no downscaling. Um, you know, that that's personally what I would recommend because things get really blurry when people have like a thousand upload and then they're trying to stream at 720p. I honestly rather just uh, I rather them just downscale the resolution on their stream and save us all the trouble. Uh, let's see. Another thing you can mess with is going to enable. Whoops, uh, I just disabled the preview. Um, but you can enable the noise gate. I don't know why it wasn't popping up for whatever reason. But what the noise gate does is that whenever uh, I have an idle sound, you can see it right here. It's balancing out right here. And you can, if you have it enabled, it won't, any noise that's below this, will not be caught on the microphone but any noise above this will definitely be caught on the microphone so you can hear me talking above that noise gate I personally don't use a noise gate actually uh, generally because my game sound tends to be louder than my uh, whatchamacallit my computer fan noise my computer tends to be fairly quiet and uh, hidden over the game sound anyways and I've never had a personal problem with it uh, let's see uh, on top of that you got hotkeys here uh, I highly recommend a hotkey to mute your mic uh, a hotkey to um, unmute your game sound or mute your desktop sound as well as uh, I have a hotkey to start my stream and a hotkey to stop my stream. Um, you know, there's a couple other hotkeys. I don't generally mess with any of this. Uh, one thing I will say is that hotkeys can be very dangerous sometimes. Um, if you, especially if you have a hotkey to start your stream, um, please make sure OBS is closed because uh, you don't want it starting by accident and mistakes happening or anything like that uh, to you know make sure you're aware of your stop stream hotkey don't want to be hitting that by accident or anything like that I'm sure or you know mind you it, uh, it, with the hotkeys if you do set them up I want you to acknowledge they're gonna take a little bit of training yourself to be like oh hey this key is here this key is there and remembering them but once you get used to them I, I feel like they're just a godsend on starting your stream muting your mic um, and things like that so you know rather than having to click over and tab out and mute and stop the stream and all that you could just press one button on your keyboard and you'll be good let's see us um, one more thing is going to be you know, you know what let's uh let's do adding a capture card as a bonus here um uh, i do have a capture card I, I tell you what, i'm just gonna add a new scene because i changed the resolution on the settings it did all this it it shows uh 
it basically it changed the base resolution of the stream from 1080p to uh, 720p and now all my images are out of place um, this is what I'm talking about like so I can go one I would hit edit scene and then I can center and then start moving things around um, you know I'll get rid of this window capture uh, this game this image here I can do properties I can reset to fit the screen and that'll be just fine on uh, game capture I'm gonna there we go so uh, let's add a ca uh, capture card uh, let's see and capture card is going to be add a video device uh, we're going to name this Elgato that's the type of capture card I have not a personal fan of it I would recommend actually getting in Aver Media or looking into different capture cards I do not like the delay this capture card has but I will show you how to work around it in just one sec um, let's see we're just going to go ahead and add that um, you can set your capture card to a resolution of uh, 1080p uh, you can take configure on your capture card make sure it's capturing the right thing uh, right now I can't really configure it because it's not added into the scene uh, so once again once you get your Elgato added in there or whatever capture card you have you can do global source you know add it in there as a global source and then we will right click we'll position to size we'll do fit the screen and then we will we're going to fit this in our overlay now this is generally how I do my overlays uh, is that basically if I want to capture my Elgato it's just a matter of unclicking the game capture and boom there's my Elgato it makes it really easy straight simple to the point um, let's see uh, now one of the things I will say is that my Elgato has a annoying 1.5 second delay on there and so what I'm gonna want to do uh, to match up my delay is uh, with my because like right now if I was to play a game on my Elgato I would react 1.5 seconds before the gameplay would actually appear on here and that's very problematic this is where you're gonna right click your webcam you're gonna go to properties and this is another big thing on is uh, that you would want your your camera as a global source uh, is because you can set a uh, buffer on there um, now 1.5 seconds is going to be 1500 milliseconds and that will match up your reactions with your Elgato now right now you're noticing that my audio is out of sync with my webcam now that's the last thing I gotta fix is that I go to settings and then I go to audio and then I'm gonna go to 1 1500 and then I should be good now the only thing is that you'll um, you'll notice when you do this if you do this that your reactions are gonna be 1.5 seconds delay when you look at OBS and it's gonna drive you nuts a little bit but uh, it'll be fine uh, it'll it'll look good uh, and like I said when you copy to another scene it'll have it'll carry over that delay as well um, aside from that uh, if you have any pro uh, I believe I covered most of any problems you may or may not occur um, the only thing I can think of is for whatever reason if you have issues with your stream let's say you're dropping a lot of frames you've set OBS before and you can't figure out why you're dropping frames uh, this is one that kind of slipped by me until recently 
um, is that I went to broadcast settings and then I changed the FMS. Uh, I don't. I, don't, I believe that stands for something something server uh, URL. And then I I swapped from the Miami server to uh, the Virginia server, and, and then it worked like a charm. Sometimes the servers of uh, Twitch just go down and you'll want to switch servers um, let's see I and oh uh, I guess the last thing I can teach you this is really I guess kind of a bonus thing um, is that you can set up hotkeys for your scene and so I could set hotkey this can be num number one uh, and then I could set hotkey. This will be number two. So I could just hit one or two. Um, you know, and one of the things with this, I set mine to the numbers. You may want to do something completely different. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but also, if you set yours to the numbers, you can hit num lock to make sure you don't tab away from the screen or anything like that. Or, you know, I personally have just gotten so used to it to where I don't even do num lock anymore. Um, and you can also do this with your microphone settings and hotkeys hot and all that. Uh, aside from that, let me sh show you one more thing. I don't think you'll ever really use this uh, in particular. Uh, let me s take off my delays on here. And let me change my video back to normal for my other scenes I don't think you guys will generally use this uh, much however uh, this is something I personally use is that I use a bunch of different scene collections um, I can add a new scene collection so let's say if you want to ex uh, experiment with something uh, and you didn't want to add a scene in here or whatever or didn't want to accidentally show it off here you can say like test scene collection um, not ideal to add a test scene collection in fact if anything I would add it more into your add a scene and then test well I can't even spell test um, add it into here and then test um, one of the other things is that uh, I have, like for me, I have a regular scene collection with set up and fleshed out. Uh, as you can see here, this is generally all the scenes, mind you, I don't use them all at once. Um, but, you know, I can use them, you know, I basically have this set up where I can mess around with as much as I want. Um, and let's see let's say you wanted to do a podcast or something like that I got this right here I set up a whole separate podcast here and where I can do this and have all this look you know set up differently in its own separate thing to where if I'm ha having the podcast I'm not able to switch over to any of the regular stuff um, and one more thing I guess would be if you wanted to copy the scene to a different scene collection uh, I could copy this over to the tutorial and you can, it, you can also copy it with the global sources to boot and there you go that shows you all this um, now mind you I'm not gonna go into any details like the CLR browser uh, which is an add-on as well as notifications or anything like that maybe I'll do something like that later but I just wanted to cover as much as I can about OBS um, sorry this is a hour-long tutorial I tend to be liking hour-long tutorials and cover as much as I can uh, but other than that let me know if you guys have any problems questions or any 
concerns that uh, you may have, um, feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube or message me on Twitch, uh, whatever have you. Um, and, you know, I'll try to help you guys out the best I can. Other than that, uh, do let me know if you like the video and, you know, uh, have a good day.